Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Tusk Compression Tester. An engine needs the correct amount of compression to run right, and a compression tester is the quickest and easiest way to check the health of your engine. Now this test is a dynamic test, so it's going to check your top end components like the cylinder, piston and rings, and the valve train components. And if you have any problems with your engine, like it's hard to start, just doesn't run right, or it doesn't start at all, it can help you find those problems. But even if your engine does run right, I do recommend still doing a compression test periodically when you do your services. And that way you can record that reading and then compare it to other readings later on down the road. And that way you'll notice if your compression starts to drop, you can get in there and make any repairs that you need to. Now, another popular test on four strokes is a leak down test. And we do have that tester available on our website. So that might be something you want to look into. But this video, we're just going to focus on doing a compression test on both two stroke and four stroke engines. To do the compression test, you need to gain access to your spark plug and remove it. And then once you have it removed, you can match the threads up to one of the adapters in the kit. So this one on the main hose is actually gonna work for us. If you don't have an adapter that's gonna work with your machine, you can actually use these plugs and they're probably not gonna give you as accurate of a measurement, but at least it'll give you a pretty good idea of where you're at. And what you'll do, these just snap right into the gauge and then you can hold it in place right on that spark plug hole and then you'll get your reading. So now that we have the correct adapter, I'm going to screw this into the spark plug hole. And when you put this in place, you don't have to crank on it. It's just an O-ring that's sealing everything. And you just screw it into place until it's snug by hand. So I fill that O-ring seat, give it a little twist, and that's tight. You don't need to go any more than that. And then we'll hook the gauge onto the end of this hose. So now that the gauge is in place, you want to set that aside somewhere out of the way. On a dirt bike, a lot of times when you do this test, you can actually just hold the kill switch and kick the bike over. And that way you're not gonna have spark jumping to anywhere. It can be a fire hazard. If you have any fuel laying around, it can light it up if there's fuel that drained anywhere on the frame, especially on multi-cylinder bikes. That's where you have your fire danger because you're gonna take both spark plugs out and then you could have fuel coming out of one of the cylinders and the spark plug wire could light that up. So just as a safety precaution, we're using a jumper wire and we're putting that where our spark plug normally goes and then we're grounding that out. So now that our gauge is set up, we're gonna turn the engine over until the needle on the gauge quits rising. So if you have an electric start machine, then you're probably gonna be around eight seconds. But if you have a kick start, you're just gonna keep going until that gauge quits rising. And while you're doing this, you wanna make sure that the throttle is held wide open. All right, so our gauge read 130 PSI and we are at 4,000 feet. So anytime you're up in elevation, your compression is gonna go down. And we actually have a chart for that. It comes with the tool and we can just compare our readings to that chart. It's gonna tell you how much compression you're gonna be losing. Now, the other thing, if your service manual doesn't come with the compression spec, if you know the compression ratio, then this chart also tells you how to figure out what your compression should be. And that way, again, if your engine is running fine, then you can compare those readings and check for a drop over time. Now, if the compression reading is low, what we can do, we can actually add a little bit of oil down into that spark plug hole, take another reading, and if the reading comes up quite a bit, then we know that we're getting some blow by past those piston rings and we need to do some top end work. So if it doesn't come up and say it's on a four stroke, then you know that the problem isn't with the piston and rings, but it's probably in your valve train components. So you want to start checking there. So to release the pressure in the gauge, you just press this button and then we can remove it. So a typical compression reading is going to be between 100 and 200 PSI. The readings can be above 200 PSI, but it's less common. And anything below 100 PSI usually won't run, but there are exceptions to that. So a lot of the four strokes nowadays come with auto decompressors and that compression reading is really just gonna be dependent on what the service manual shows you. So on those, some auto decompressors 
in, those engines in good condition will have about 60 PSI, but other engines like the Cowie we're about to show you, that compression reading can be anywhere from about 104 to 163 PSI, anywhere in there. So it really depends on the machine. So you always wanna to refer to your model specific service manual when you're doing these tests. Now that we've shown you how to do this test on a two stroke, we'll show you how to do it on the four stroke. And the bike we have here is a KX450F. And with any four stroke, again, you need to gain access to the spark plug and remove it. So we've gone ahead and done that. And then what we did, we matched the spark plug to the corrected adapter. And while you have the spark plug out, it's a good idea to check it to see if there's any oil on it. There's no oil on ours, but if yours does have oil on it, then you might have either bad piston rings or it is possible that you have some valve guide seals that are bad. Either one, you'll want to check and inspect what's going on there. And then we'll install this adapter onto our gauge. All right, so now we'll screw the gauge into where the spark plug goes. And again, we're just going finger tight on this. And if none of these threaded adapters fit your machine, then just like the two stroke, you can use the universal adapter where the spark plug goes. Then we'll connect our gauge to this hose. I'm gonna set this in place. Again, we've grounded out our spark plug cap. There is another style with coil on cap. And for that, you'll just remove the coil on cap. And after you've done that, we're gonna hold the throttle wide open and we'll crank the engine over for eight seconds or until the gauge quits rising. Our gauge stopped at 109 PSI. The spec on this bike is 104 to 163.4. So we're definitely on the lower end and to check whether or not we have a problem with the piston rings and cylinder or a problem with the valve seating or maybe the valve clearances could be a little bit tight. How we'll check that is by dropping a couple of drops of oil down the spark plug hole, and then we'll take our compression reading again. If the compression reading rises, we know that we have a problem with the piston rings or cylinder, something in there. If it doesn't rise, that means we probably have a valve train issue. So after doing that test, we only had one PSI increase in compression. So we know these piston rings are probably doing their job all right. And again, this bike, it still actually is within spec and we are at elevation. So we might not have an issue at all, but if your reading is out of spec and you didn't get an increase in compression when you drop that oil down in there, then you wanna check by, you wanna start by checking your valve clearance. And once you've done that, if all that still checks out okay, you might have a problem with the valves actually seating. So the other thing I do wanna point out is if you have a machine that has multiple cylinders, you wanna remove all the spark plugs at once, ground those spark plug wires, and then do these same checks, but you'll just do it one cylinder at a time and then go from there. So if you need help with more diagnostic stuff, that chart that comes with this tester actually has some of that information in there. So it can be a helpful resource. If you need this tool, it's available on our website. And if you do have any troubles with your engine, maybe you need a top end kit. We have a lot of different options on there as well. And subscribe to our YouTube channel because if you didn't find the problem that you're having with your machine from this video, we have a lot of other helpful videos on there. Thanks for watching.